To promote my new flower shop, I had one place print my business cards, another print my brochures, and a third, my signs. Now my roses aren't red, my violets aren't blue, my geraniums look dead, and I don't know what to do. Staples can help your business stand out with signs, banners, and brochures that are a true reflection of your company. And now at Staples, spend $50 or more on print and marketing services and get $5 off your next in-store purchase. Now my business is blossoming and I'm spending less green. Exclusions apply. In-store only. And 623-18. Table. I'm your host, Michael Lennon, and tonight's guest, the conjure man, hoodoo practitioner, or root doctor, worker of both hands, whichever is necessary to maintain the balance, a servant of spirit and the root, real unadulterated magic. Let me bring on hoodoo Sen Mois, or Sen Moise. <laughs> hey, welcome. Are you there, and can you hear me? I'm here. I can hear you. How you doing? I am doing fantastic. I'm so glad that you were able to join us. Sorry that we are, you know, we've moved on to a different platform. Um, you know, we had some issues on the previous show with losing audio, and that was not a very pleasant <laughs> experience having no show. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine, you know. Well, but then again, I guess there's a reason for everything, huh? There is, and you know, as I progress and move through with this uh, blog talk and this new show, um, there are going to be some changes. I'm going to be able to have live callers, you know, as I move forward to be able to do like live mini readings, multiple guests. So I think it's going to be for the best. Yeah, I think so too. Um, it's always good whenever, you know, like people with questions or 
whatever can you know can call in and and uh i think that it makes for a a really uh a platform that has a lot of additional potential with it that i agree with now you're a hoodoo practitioner a conjure man a root doctor you know you work both hands um I understand both hands because <laughs> I do the same. Uh, not a lot of people understand what uh, working both hands means. Could you explain that to us? Sure. <clears throat> In this work that we do, this work is not about what is good or what is evil because, quite frankly, those terms are relative. You know, what you know is considered you know, good one place may be considered bad in another. What this work really is about, it's it's about is the work that you're doing, is it justified? Is there justice that's, that's behind it? Is it balance? Balance is the key to everything. And in order to have balance, you have to know both sides of the coin. And knowing both sides of the coin being uh, uh, it means that, you know, that one should be able to, you know, work with both hands. In other words, do things that, you know, that might, you know, be pleasant and do things that aren't pleasant. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty to get the job done, you know? Exactly. And a lot of people don't understand or realize that, you know, some people are all about just the white and the light. But if you haven't been through, I'll show you the shit storms, um, how do you know how to protect yourself? You know, if you haven't been attacked you know how do you know how to you know protect yourself when that when stuff like that happens so it's important you know from any type of magical system to be able to do both hands be able to work both sides so that you can effectively come at whatever situation it is in the best possible way and it is not always pleasant and it's not always pretty (laughs) exactly and that's and that's very very true and you know sometimes you know, the, like uh, the the classic example that I always give with regard to that, because I get from a lot of people, you know, they're like, oh, well, you know, I, you know, I hear the, you know, the thing about karma or the, you know, don't do any harm and blah, 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 blah. And that's fine if that's your principle. But let me ask you a question. Let's just say that one night you're at your house and you're in bed and you're asleep. And, you know, there's you and your family or whoever, you know, is all there. And you're all asleep. And somebody breaks into your house coming after you to harm you and your family or whatever. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to turn the other cheek? Are you going to let them I'm do whatever they want? Just be like, oh, I'm just going to pray. You know, no, I'm not going to do that either. I promise you they ain't ever going to leave my house. Never again. <laughs> And it's important that people understand that, you know, in this work, you know, even if you think about karma, you know, sometimes karma also needs a helping hand, you know, and that's the way I always Absolutely. look at it. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. karma doesn't automatically just come back at you. Sometimes there are other possibilities that, you know, cause things to come back at you. And those are some of right. the things that we work with. Now, you're also a diviner, too, Correct. Um, I work in divination, sure. Uh, Being a priest, you kind of have to. (laughs) (laughs) So what type of divination do you work with? Um, I read cards. um, I read tarot cards, playing cards. Um, I also uh, read uh, uh, cowrie shells and uh, chumalongos primarily. Okay, because you are also, you know, a hungan, you are a palero. Um, you have That's multiple correct. spiritual practices that you have followed during the course of your over 30 years. I'll say 32 because, you know, you don't, you don't look that old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, and now I understand that you also have a shop down in New Orleans, too. Is that correct? Yes, uh, I, I co-own a store uh, in uh, New Orleans, in the, uh, and the name of the store is called Conja. Um And uh, I co-own it with uh, with Star Cassis, and um, it's a place where, you know, you can find, you know, all kinds of uh, products uh, with regard to uh, hoodoo, conjure, Haitian voodoo, that sort of thing. And it's a place where, you know, like, you know, we also do readings there, and 
and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you know, there's always something going on down here in New Orleans. So, you know, <laughs> we kind of get in a little bit of it all. <laughs> you just had, what was it, St. John's Eve? Yes, we, we just did a um, – uh, a St. John's uh, uh, weekend, St. John's Eve weekend uh, of Conjure, which uh, consisted of uh, a full day of classes, and we had some amazing uh, presenters come in um, <clears throat> and talk about, you know, an array of topics. Um, we had uh, Amberzine Laguerre come in. Uh, we had uh, Crystal Madison come in. Uh, uh, Ugan Hector, who is my godbrother, came in. Uh, and uh, my godmother, uh, Marie Loiseau, Mambo Marie Carmel, um, oh, yeah. came in. And then, and then uh, uh, Star and I uh, taught as well. The first day was all about uh, classes. And then uh, we did a, uh, a masquerade ball uh, on St. John's Eve. Oh, nice. I saw some of those pictures on Facebook. I was just like, oh, my God, look at them. It's like, I, I, I don't even know what I would end up going as if I was to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like in New Orleans. It's, you know, it's always a surprise, but not a surprise, you know? Right. Yeah, I know. It's. Uh, and- <laughs> I haven't been there as of yet, but, you know, I do plan on making a trip or two down to, uh, you know, New Orleans, hopefully next year when uh, things definitely. settle down in the dust, you know. So what's your favorite style of divination? I do, do you have a, a lot. <laughs> um, well, I will say this. I do a lot, a lot, a lot of readings. Um, a lot of the readings that I do um, are phone readings. Now, for me, if I am doing a phone reading, um, I'm going to use cards. Because like with uh, like uh, Chomolongos, for example, or the Shells, for example – those have to be done in front of a particular spirit. And so like, you know, and I have clients, you know, I've got clients, you know, in Europe, I have clients in Africa, Australia, South America, you you know what I mean? I I have people that that are not, they're not here. So they're going to call me, you know, to to do a reading. So if I'm doing a reading over the phone, um, I'm going to use cards just because like with, with the other readings, there are uh, stipulations that are attached, you know, to them that that would not make it possible for me to do them unless they were physically present. Right, because some things you have to be in front of the mat, or you have to be, say, in front of your pot, or you have to be in front of, you Correct. know, you have to actually be present. And you know, and that brings up a great topic because you know we see a lot of this on Facebook with um, certain forms of divination, you know, especially coming out of Africa because we see a lot of these posts on some of the Ifa systems where, you know, in a lot of that, you have to sit on the mat in front to be able to have the correct divination performed for you. Um, There are certain things, you know, traditionally that I don't think should change. Some things should remain the same. And although we can do divination with cards, we can do divination with, you know, bones or shells or, you know, any other method. Tradition still, in my eye, has to remain strict and adhered to. You know, absolutely. I, and and, and, and you're, you're absolutely right about that. And if I could, I'll even give you an example with regard to that. Like when, when I was going, when, when I, I was contemplating um, going into Palo. Oh, and by the way, before I get on that. Uh, just so the things that I do conjure, like the conjure, the Palo and the voodoo, those are all cousins. Yeah. So in other words, they're, they're all closely related. There's a little bit of a different technology and a different, but they all come from the same area. And those practices in a lot of ways are very similar. Just throwing that out there because, you know, the next thing I know, somebody's going to be like, Oh my God, you got all oh, these traditions. Well, it's all the same family. So, you know, it's not it's not that different. Um, no. But um, what I was going to say was when I was getting ready to uh, – uh, when I was uh, exploring going into, into Palo, you know, one of the things, at least in the Rama that I'm scratched in, um, that has to be done is what's called a consulta. And that means that you have to, you have, to have a reading done uh, 
to see if that impungo will accept you or not. And that reading cannot be done over the phone, and it cannot be done via email and none of that stuff. So I had to fly to Miami to have that reading done. So I, I flew to Miami for a reading. That was it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, you know, that that's that's the way that this that that, that this works. Like there are reasons for these things. You know? Right, and and one of those reasons, you know, from the spiritual aspect is, you know, getting scratched or getting crowned or receiving, you know, your your you know your loa or anything else, is you don't want the wrong spirit on your head. You don't want to be scratched underneath Never. the wrong spirit. You don't want to have the wrong orisha, you know, on the top of your head, you know. Those things can cause and wreak havoc in your life when you are not tuned correctly to the guardian spirit that's, you know, on your head. And you are absolutely right. And that's, and that's something that is extremely, extremely important. You know, like there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things that, that are done that people do in my opinion that, that, you know, like are, have the potential to be, you know, quite dangerous. And I'll give you an example of that, you know, and, you know, people can say what they want, but I'm going to tell you this. One of the things that I get a lot is I get people who come to me and they want me to tell them, they want me to, to tell them who their Loa are. They want me to tell them who their Metzed is. Metzed, if you don't know, um, whoever's listening, if you don't know, it means master of the head. It's like the, it's like your your the the the, the loa who who sits on well one of the loa who sits on your head the main one, and I can tell you this you know that 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 for example is not done by way of a divination, it's actually no. a ceremony that happens. Exactly. And so, but at the same point in time, you have so many people that you know like oh. I'm going to pull a card and I'm going to tell you who your met set is. That's not how the, that's not how the voodoo works. Sorry. No. You know, that's it, it's not simply how, not it's the not way that it is. It's not how a lot of systems work, you know. We can speculate all we want, you know. I mean, I know people of that course. are very talented and gifted that can look at people and, you know, hone in on the energy of whatever the loa is or the, you know, um, the Orisha or any other spirit but until you actually, I'll call it, bring down that spirit during ceremony, you're really not going to be 100% sure. And you don't want to just walk in blindly and say, okay, I'll just take whatever, because it does wreak havoc. It can cause you know, all sorts of upsets in your life, whether it be spiritual, physical, emotional, mental, financial, I mean – Absolutely, you're tuning into an incorrect energy. Absolutely, yeah. when when those when when it, it, it can be, it is it is it has the potential to be a very dangerous thing, and that's why you always want to seek out somebody who knows. Quite right? frankly, there are so many who do not, and they and they may try to tell you this, that, or the other, and you know the results of that can be devastating they absolutely can you know and you know people are like oh well you know i'll be protected or you know i'm this that okay you keep telling yourself that whenever shit falls apart and you got to call me it ain't going to be cheap to fix it just so as you know and there are a lot of things that we can do divination wise you know we can sit and we can, you know, throw cards or we can do the chamalongos or the shells or the bones. And we can see that there are spiritual things attached to a person. There are, you know, influences sure. magically mm -hmm. for, you mm -hmm. know, whatever situation a person is in. Um, as a spiritual worker, you know, and a diviner, you know, what are some of the areas that you end up dealing with the most? You know, would it be love and finances or, is it, you know, trying to get a job? You know, because I think I we have, all have different people that come to us <laughs> for certain things, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. For me, I, I have a lot of people. Um, a lot of people will come to me for justice work. 
A lot of people come to me for cleansing work, and a lot of people come to me for love work. Like those are the three, like the the three, like money work. I I, I think with the money work that that's that's an across the board thing. So I don't think it matters who you are. Everybody's going to have everybody people who come say can do some money work on me. So I don't even really count that. But for me, like those are the probably probably the three uh, biggest things that that folks come to me for is is you know justice, cleansing, and uh, uh, and love work. Um, and then half the time it's always you know can can I get my man back or can I get my woman back and blah, blah, blah. And I will tell you this 90% of the time, I won't, I won't even talk to you. I'm just like, you know, they're, they're your ex for a reason. Right. Um, you know, you're their ex for a reason. And so like, I'm not, I don't, I don't get caught up in, in uh, every now and again, I'll take a case like that. But most of the time I don't um, just because, you know, I, most people, not everybody, but most people, you know, they, they find it difficult to be completely honest whenever I'm asking them about the nature of the condition. What's going on? What's happening with such and such and such and such? They always conveniently leave out details. And then whenever, you know, work starts and, you know, things, you know, this thing or this thing happens, you know, and I say, what was re- what else was going on that you didn't tell me about? Oh, well, you know. Uh, such and such and such and such had happened. That would have been information that was useful back then. Now you've just compounded things and made them, you know, a whole lot worse because you were not honest with it. So that's why most of the time, for like every now and again, I'll take a, I'll take a case for love work. Um, but most of the time, I, you know, like I'll send it out to to uh, to other workers that uh, <clears throat> um, that uh, well, let's just say have more patience than I do. <laughs> hey, well, I can understand that because I won't do work for love stuff most of the time myself either. And a lot of that has to do with two particular reasons. One is, sure, I can bring somebody back for you. But the big part is you keeping them, learning how to nurture your relationship, learning how to you know, learn from past mistakes to try and continue otherwise you're going to be in the same boat again with the same person you know they're well, going to eventually anyway you know and the other reason i don't is there's new people that are out there you know relationships are kind of like a bus you know another one will be along in 20 minutes you know right why do we exactly. want to hold on to old patterns old behaviors when we can cut ourselves loose and move forward. Exactly. You know? mm-hmm. And I'm always but the you, one. But you find there's a lot of handholding too, huh? Oh yes. <laughs> and I'm not one for handholding. Me I, either. I'm. I'm, I'm like sink or swim, bitch. <laughs> I'll give you everything that you need. Here it is. I'll even give you the instructions, but then you're on your own. Like, I'm not going to walk you through every right. step, or you know, continually say, "Well, I think you should do this," and then follow up with this. And then get a call the next day or the same day or a few hours later. It's too, for me, it's too taxing, you know, and there's other areas that, you know, as a worker and a diviner, I can push myself into. And I would rather right. have myself, you know, work in areas that, you know, I find the most joy out of. Money things are one thing that yeah. I love to do. Justice things are things that I enjoy doing. Love things. Eh. If you're single and you're looking for somebody, Absolutely. You know, open up the doors and help bring things in. Of course, and 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 th- like that kind of work, like that kind of love work, I'll I'll do all day, effectively all day. But, wh- but you know, like like I said, some of, some of that other stuff, because you know, inevitably, what ends up happening with the whole bring my man back, bring my woman back shit, is that you end up dealing with. You know, first you're doing the work for them, and then after the work is done and they have them back, then you got to turn into Dr. Phil, and I ain't about that life. <laughs> I don't think any of us are about that life. And, and, it, and it's one of those things that, you know, I'm not a therapist. You know, if somebody needs therapy, I will refer them to a therapist. If they need mental health counseling, I will refer them to a mental health counselor, you know. There are certain things that I can do, certain things I can't. Those that I can't, I will refer out because, you know, as a 
worker, as a diviner, you know, there are people, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, there are people that I will not read for. The minute I start talking to them, for whatever reason, my spirit says, nope, absolutely not. Send them off to somebody else. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm the same, and, and the same way because be, before I do work for anybody, for anybody, that I'm going to say, hey, such and such over here wants uh, this work done. What y'all think? And they'll be like, yay or eh, eh. And so they say, no, I'm be like, well, I'm going to refer you to somebody else. Bye. <laughs> you know, so as a diviner, you know, what do you think is important for people to have, you know, to, to do or develop in order to become a really great diviner? You know, because I mean, I you always I, I'm sure you've heard my show before. I, there's always a difference to me for people that are diviners and people that are just readers. Sure. For me, for me, I will tell you that the a number one thing, first and foremost, that anybody can have if they truly want to do that work is a strong relationship with their ancestors. Number one. A strong relationship with your ancestors and a strong relationship with your spirit. Because here's the thing. In the divinations and such, we ourselves are nothing but a mouthpiece. And if you can't hear the voice that is saying, say such and such and such and such and such and such, or showing you this, that, or the other, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to begin to get cross messages, and then you're going to begin to, 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 to do uh, uh, not-so-good divinations for folks, you see. Yes, and I and agree so 100%. If you, if you don't have that relationship, if you don't have that, that relationship and that sensitivity to the spirit, then there's a problem. Yep. And that's why I always differentiate you know, the difference between being a reader and being a diviner. Is, you know, diviners, we connect to our ancestors, our spirits, our guides. You know, we develop that connection, that relationship, and it's an ongoing relationship, just like you have with a friend, you know, just like you have with family members. You know, Absolutely. you work with it every day, and the more you work with it, the stronger it gets. You know, it might start out with a little whisper here and there when you first start. You know, but that voice, the more you work, it gets louder and the messages oh, get yeah. deeper and the images become more engulfed and, you know, they provide you with, you know, flashes and smells. I mean, every person is different. You know, you've got people that, you know, can hear, can see, can feel, can smell, you know, some that can use all the senses, some that are really good with certain ones and some that are really good with others. But the more you work it, the more those skills get honed, the more you open up. And as you do that, you mm-hmm. become more and more of a better diviner, you know. And Absolutely. For, you know, and a reader, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with uh, being a reader if that's what you want to be. You know, there are some really good readers out there that people will go to because they just want to have certain answers, yes or no. They want to know exactly what's going on, but they're not looking for that real divine connection, you know. Right. But when you need to really spiritually see why things are taking place, what's going on, how come you're not moving from point A to point B, there's hidden things in the spiritual realm that being a diviner can tap into yes. and say, look, this is what's going on. And you may not get that with just a regular reader. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. And I'll tell you this, I'll even take it a step further. When you have that strong of a relationship with your spirit, I can, you can put the cards away. You can put you can put everything away. You don't need, that that becomes basically just a tool for show for somebody yes. else, so they can have something to look at. You don't need none of that. No, I I used to do that quite frequently when I worked in the Botanica up here. Exactly. A lot of times, my cards were people needed something to look at. And I could exactly. do a full half hour reading for people and not even be looking at the cards because they're really not for me. They're really just the props for the person that needs to see something physical. Right. They're, they're looking for that. And that's, and that's the thing. 
you know, and, and I can't tell you how many times, how many times, you know, like I would, you know, I'll go, you know, uh, up to somebody, um, you know, and they'll ask me, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, you know, 20 minutes go by and I've already told them their life story without pulling a card. You don't have to, because the thing is, is that your spirits that are, that, that are there, they're giving you all of the messages that, that, that individual needs to hear at that particular time. And, you know, and some people, you know, like the way that I, the way that I look at it, like we'll just take uh, reading cards, for example. There are people who read cards scientifically, and there are people who read cards spiritually, okay? Yes. The scientific side to it, the sci- the, you know, uh, the quote scientific side to it, you know, is somebody, let's say that they get a tarot deck, and they get the little book with it, and they memorize everything that's in that little book, and they know, you know, what the little book says about what every single card means, blah, 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 blah. That's what I would call somebody who reads, you know, scientifically. They're reading in, 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 in that vein. A spiritual reader will take one card, will take one card, and in that one card, there's 100,000 different ways to read that one card because it's not always about everything that's on the card, but it's about one small piece of something that's on that card that's applicable to that individual at that particular time. You know, exactly. there's a hundred thousand ways to read one card, you know, and that's the thing, you know, when, when you begin to hear the voice of your spirit and have that in conjunction with what is in front of you, what you're doing is you're bringing yourself as far as divination goes to a whole nother level of things. And you're seeing things in such a different way that you're able to tell a more complete story. Exactly. And I don't think people realize that, you know, the, the little books that come with, you know, tarot and, you know, there's more than one technique to read tarot cards. You know, you do have your scientific sure. method. You do have your traditionalist that sticks strictly to this is what this means. But you also have people, you know, like myself, you know, I'm a very intuitive reader. I read, you know, pictures, images, colors, shapes, you know, you name it. If I look at a card, regardless of what deck it's from, it holds a specific meaning just to me. And it may not be right. the scientific or approved method that a lot of people will read, but it works for me because, you know, as a spiritual medium, as a diviner, you know, I, I do connect to all of my spirits and they do talk to me and they do explain to me, hey, I'm awakening this feeling in you for this particular card for this person. And that card could have, you know, thousands of different meanings for different people because it's never going to be the sure. same. It's not always going to mean the same exact thing. And of course I, not. And, and it can't, it, you know, it can't think, because every individual is unique and every situation is unique. Exactly. And I think what a lot of people also need to do, too, is to work on their own trust, the, their, the self-trust in their own spiritual connection that they have. You know, we mm-hmm. learn a system of divination. You know, we learn all the ins and outs, say, of tarot reading or of tea card reading or Lenormand, you know, cards. We know the, the language and the sentences that get formed. But down the line, you know, we always have that thing in our ear that says, hey, you got to say this. And sometimes people don't say that because, well, it's outside the box. It's not within the same set of rules. And I think that people need to start trusting those inner voices to say, hey, I know this is not the same thing. I know this is not what this traditionally should mean, but this is what I'm getting. And I think the more they right. start to trust that inner voice, the more things will open up and they'll be able to start divining more outside the box. Because, you know, divination is not just a, you know, it's set and done. It's like, here's a little roadmap, but there are many side roads you can take to get to the same end. Explore them all. Mm-hmm. You know, explore every right. direction instead, you know, not just the one. You know, now... I also hear, and I can't say I hear because I already know, I also know that you have a book that is now available 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually out just yet or if it's still available for pre-sale. Can you tell oh, us yes. about that? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, <clears throat> it does not get released. Uh, it, the release date is uh, September the 1st. Um, and it's um, it's a book that uh, is uh, was written uh, through uh, uh, Wiser uh, Red Wheel Publication. Um, and what the book is about, the book is about you know uh, about you know how to work conjure, how to work hoodoo. Um, from my experience, my perspectives, and you know in the 36 years that I've been doing this, um, it's. I'm the type of person to where like if I'm like if I want to know something like I want like to to do things. So I'm not big on like theories and you know and this bullshit and that. Like I want you to I want to know how to do something. So in right. the book there is a there's a lot of different work, like a different kinds of workings and stuff that that that's in there. I go into a bit of like the history of of conjure. Um, and then you know, the, like there's there's stuff in there about like you know like the the, the spirit of the roots, uh, the spirit of the dirt, spirit of place, you know all of those things which are very 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 important and potent in conjure, and you know I believe that that conjure should always be very hands on, so therefore I put in it a lot of things that people you know if you want to so let's say that you want to do such and such for prosperity well here's a work how to do that let's say that you have an enemy that won't leave you to hell alone and you want to make him disappear well here's something for that you know what i mean so um right and it's, it's not theory. it is a uh, practical you know here exactly. are the steps you this know how it's done exactly and you know those are the kinds of books that i like now what's the name of your book so that our listeners you know if they are looking to get it on amazon they can you know do a search uh, the, for it. the name, yes, uh, and 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 uh, Wiser Wiser has it up on Amazon now for pre-order. Uh, the name of the book is called Working Conjure. So it, it's uh, it's uh, called Working Conjure, and um, it is uh, they do have it on uh, on uh, on Amazon for uh, for for pre-order. So that way, you know, folks can go ahead and they can you know, get on it. And they've told me that, uh, that the pre-sales for that, you know, that, that they're, I guess, quite impressed with, uh, with, uh, <laughs> the, the pre-sales thus far for it. So I'm, I was, I'm very proud of that because I can tell you this, like, honestly, like I never want, I come from the old school, you know, like, like when I was coming up, like none of these things were written down, you know, in books and stuff like that. This is just what how we how we worked and, and and what happened this is how we did it and you know it was for me it was a little bit of a transition because i was like i was never that type of person who wanted i never wanted to write a book um but you know you, as you times change and you didn't want to be in the know, limelight you didn't want to be the uh, a big name you just wanted to do what it is that you love doing Right, and the thing is, is that because this is the, the the work is the the way that it is, you know, it's one of those things to where, you know, I I can look, you know, now and see all kind of foolishness everywhere now, and, and it just it sickens me. <laughs> it's just like, what the hell is this, you know? And and the the you know, and so somebody has said to me, somebody has said to me, given me. You know, one of the best pieces of advice that I have ever gotten in my entire life, and I'll never forget it, and that was, you know, all these people with these books and this and that and all this other shit out there, what they're doing is they're writing the narrative for what all of this is. And if you don't get out there and do the same thing, then you're going to allow them to dictate what is and what isn't. And that stuck with me, and that really was the inspiration behind it. Making sure that you got true, real, deep information about real workings and not watered down, you know, inconsistencies and things that are not accurate. And it is something that's needed. I mean, there's there's more need now for real, good, honest, here's the truth, 
here's how we actually do it and how I have learned through the years, you know, to be able to do all of this work. And, you know, some people go out and just make that, uh, you know, that quick dollar, put their name out. And, you know, I know that you are more of the humble person. You are more of the, you know, I'm not doing this because I want to make a name for myself. You're doing this because you're almost pushed into the corner to say, you know, it's time that some real stuff gets put out again and let people see real work by real practitioners. Right. Right. And, 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 and then, you know, cause like I said, there, like quite frankly, there's so much dumb shit that you see, like, you know, people trying to like mix this with this and mix this with this. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, like quite frankly, yes, conjure is an oral tradition. It absolutely is, but it is a tradition nonetheless. And so like, you know, <clears throat> For me, I don't give a shit what anybody does because every man has to work out their own salvation, okay? Everybody mm-hmm. has to do that. But here's the thing. When you – like uh, one time I saw uh, somebody – somebody had – they had uh, – uh, they, they posted some picture of them, you know, quote, charging uh, a mojo hand. And they had the mojo hand sitting on top of like – some like uh, like a uh, 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 a pentagram with this that and the other. And I'm like, we don't do that in this work. That is not conjure. <laughs> if you want to, like, it's not. I'm sorry, but it's not. And here's the thing. I will tell you this. I am a traditionalist. I absolutely am because I believe that if you're involved in a tradition, then you need to work that tradition. That's what you need to do. Now, if you're involved in more than one, fine. That's great, and that's wonderful. But here's the thing, like, don't take one and then and then mash it up with another one and call it something else. You know what I mean? And call, you know what I'm saying? So, like, oh, why would you do that? You know, it makes people have that no hard sense time. to me. People have that hard time separating, you know, one tradition from another tradition. They have a hard time, you know, if they are, you know. Poleros, or whether they are, you know, crowned in the Orisha traditions, whether they are Wiccan or, you know, uh, Hungans or Mambos in, you know, Haitian Voodoo. Right. Each one has their own particular way to work. None of which yeah. are the same. You can't take one work from one tradition, transfer it over, and work with it completely in a way that it's not supposed to. You're doing, I will call it half-assed work because you are not adhering to this is how it's actually done within this tradition itself. Now, if you want to change right. that and do something completely, don't call it hoodoo. Don't call it root work. Don't call it, you know, if, if you're just doing magic, that's a completely different thing, you know, without being under an umbrella. But if you're going to do hoodoo, do hoodoo and do it exactly. traditionally. Exactly. Do it the way that it's supposed to be done. Don't be adding like all this other shit in there you, it, because it's like, for A, number one, you, you're confusing people. But B, the other thing is I am firmly convinced, I'm firmly convinced that a lot of that crap that goes on, it's just because people are trying to get attention because they want to be spooky. You know, some dumb shit. You know, like that – but like you know, like with that example, like that, like those are those are different things. They're not the same. And in some ways, some ways there 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 is opposition against one another with that. But hey, exactly. who am I? I don't know. You know. Well, but that's uh, like you know, I've seen but, pictures uh, on, I've seen those pictures on the internet of people that are using the uh, Orisha Ogun statue, and they're using it for Ogun in. Haitian Vodou. Now, right. Nope. Different. Ogun is not Ogun. You know, it's a different Ogun. I mean, it's the same energy per se, but it's a different tradition. And you can't represent a Voodoo Loa with a, you know, Ocha statue. It's not the same it's a, energy. It's you're different. not calling upon the same, you're not calling upon the Loa. You are basically doing. I'll say confusion magic because you are getting yourself confused over what you are actually calling right. upon. Correct. And then you're gonna, and then they're going to wonder why this doesn't work. <laughs> right. It's it's not the same. It's it's different. And even within, even with even though like the Ogus 
and the Oguns, like both come from the same place. They're not the same spirits. Right. They're different. Those spirits are different. And so, you know, that's like, that's like, you know, you trying to like, you know, put a picture, put a picture of your third cousin and tell everybody it's you. No, <laughs> ain't you. And spirit will know that it is not them. You know, spirit will do that right. look that, you know, we give people when we look at them and they say something completely stupid and we got that what the fuck look you got on your face. It's like, exactly. you know, it makes it makes no sense. Now, you're also, from what I hear, going to be at the Mile High Conjure Gala in September on the 29th and the 30th. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be up there. Denver will not be the same. <laughs> so what is it that you're going to be uh teaching and educating up there when you're out there? Uh at the at the gala I'm going to be doing uh I'm going to be doing uh doing a class about the ancestors and um <clears throat> teaching people how to 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 begin to to work with them, how to effectively work with them and how to you know to to move forward in that relationship because realistically more than anything else, the ancestors should be first because they are the very foundation that we stand on. It is by their blood, sweat, and tears that we're standing where we are today. And it is everything that they have done that have put us in the place that we are in so that we can move forward. There's a lot of people who always, they, they instantly try to run to, you know, this Loa, this Orisha, this God or whatever, they're blah, blah, blah. But they completely disregard where they came from. And my whole thing is, is that you better fucking know where you came from because that's how you're going to know where you're going. You see? Exactly. And so, and so that's what I'm going to be doing over there. And I'm glad you are doing that because, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, in a lot of the traditions that we follow, and when I say traditions that we follow, mostly I'm speaking about the, you know, African traditional religions, you know, Ancestor reverence or ancestor working is the foundation of our entire spiritual practice. It is a practice mm -hmm. of its own, but it's the, the root. It's Absolutely. the foundation that we build upon for everything. And even when I worked in a botanica for 15 years doing spiritual work and readings, my ancestors were the first people I ever went to. They were the ones I did mm -hmm. most of my work with. They were the ones I did, you know... Really tough jobs, yeah, I would call upon the Loa or I would, you know, work with the Orisha. But most of the spiritual magic that I did was from the Espiritista side, from working with my ancestors, knowing right. how to set up my bove them, knowing how to work and call upon my ancestors and which ones to call upon for certain things. Because, you know, I know some of my family, which were very good at particular things in life, right. they translate to particular great work in spirit. You know, so it's like thinking about your ancestors, kind of like thinking about, you know, your friends. You have friends that are great in communication. They're great in, you know, writing things up or they're great in doing graphic design. And you go to those ones that you know are great at something to get the best work. Right. And it's the same with the ancestors. And I think that that's a phenomenal thing because not enough people, one work with their ancestors. What no. would you say to people? Cause you know, we all have this, you know, we all have those black sheep in the family. You all have those ancestors that we don't like, or that we've heard horror stories with. How do you tell people to get over that and to start working with those spirits in their own lineage that they may have a problem or an issue with? Well, here's the thing is that, you know, that, that goes both ways. You know, you may have ancestors that you don't like. You might got ancestors that don't like you. You know, it like it's a choice on both sides of that fence. It's always a choice. But the thing about it is, is that you know, <clears throat> uh, I have found that when somebody you know leaves the body and becomes an ancestor, they kind of get a whole different outlook than they had before. There may be some things that are still you know still similar and the same, but a lot of it changes. And the thing is, is that, you know, you will have ancestors that are come to you that will be very, very strong with you that you're with all the, that, all the time. And that can be where you focus your work. 
you know, you may have ancestors that, that you that you don't like. Well, if you don't like them, then, you know, that's on you. You know, but at the end of the day, what's more important, the fact that you like or dislike somebody or the work that you're doing? And that's what I would say work. because if you're – of course. You know, and, so, and it's tough for people. I mean, we understand that, you know, not everybody gets along in life. Not everybody gets along with their ancestors. And I also agree that when spirit does leave the body – you know, they are elevated. They see all that they have done in life. They see the good, the bad, the ugly. And for them to elevate and ascend, they have to atone for things that they have done in life. And a lot of times working with us is part of that. You know, we offer them prayers. We offer them, you know, whether we do the rosaries or do certain prayers from, you know, this book of selected prayers to help elevate them and to help work with them to let them move to the next plane of existence. You know, it is a hand in hand thing. You know, we can either leave them and not do anything with them, but it doesn't help us spiritually. It doesn't help them spiritually. It doesn't help our ancestors line spiritually at all. Because we have to lift everybody. We can't, I don't think we can pick and choose. You know, I think that forgiveness is for us as humans. Spirit has already learned all about forgiveness. You know, so well, to exactly. help lift them. Is, 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 and, and, you know. and, and, and you're <laughs> absolutely right. And, and you know what? There is a part of that. There is a part of that to where you know, folks can even find healing for themselves in if they will allow it. And that is one of the biggest things, you know, people don't realize the amount of healing that takes place when you work with your ancestors, you know, you are drawing upon energies for, you know, however many generations your family has been in existence. And as you are working and growing with them, you know, you heal, you overcome certain things. And a lot of times you don't even realize that you have done that until you are placed in a situation similar to what you've had an issue with. And you realize that you can now speak about it. You don't have the emotional connection to it, you know, so healing happens on such a deep level and so multifaceted that a lot of times we don't realize that it's taking place. We're just doing what we need to do spiritually and we're already lifting. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, know, and the other Karen, thing, and the, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I Karen just, Dalton Smith, who is uh T with Karen on Facebook had a question. She wants to know how far back, you know, your ancestor, you know, how far back do your ancestors go? I mean, how far back can you hear or feel them? That's kind of a tough question. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. You, your, the, your ancestors will go back as far as it needs to be. You will have some very, very, very old, old ancestors that will come to you and – you know, some folks may not. That, that's not a question that uh, – I, I, how should I say this? It's not a question that a general answer can be given, but as you're continuing to do the work of your ancestors, trust and believe that more will come forward and more that you have never met before, more that you don't know before, but they'll come forward, and then revelation will be given that, yes, indeed, that this is another ancestor that, that you have – that you're beginning to, you know, to work with, because the thing is, is that, you know, the blood speaks to the blood. So as far back as your blood goes, that's as far back as your ancestors will go, and they'll come forward whenever they see fit. And, and they're always different. You know, there's multiple ones that I have, and there's one that I use that I shouldn't say I use. There's one that uses me when I do healings on people, you know, when I'm doing a despojo or when I'm doing any type of a rompimiento type cleansing that mm -hmm. is so old that I look like I am this tiny little shrunken old woman 
that has a hard time walking, you know, but when she breaks out her, um, it, it's a giant hanker, handkerchief, you know, multicolored, uh, mm-hmm. hank, handkerchief. Um, she likes to wave it, you know, so she, it'll be dipped in whatever, whether it's Florida water or a bano or anything else. And it's done like a fan. But it is done so fast, you would not, you would not even believe that an energy that looks that frail, that fragile, that tiny old woman could move, you know, like supersonic speed <laughs> when this takes place. You know, that's one of my oldest. I have my grandmother comes to me too. She's only been oh, past yeah. about five years. Um, you know, God love her. She has been one of my guiding rocks in my life. She has, you know, my whole family support of, of me, even though I'm the black sheep of the family, you know, I follow different traditions than everybody else. I have always been the spiritual person in the family, you know, but they've allowed me to grow into who I am. And I do, you know, my bovida consists of, you know, not just your standard, you know, goblets of water, but I also have, um, doll representations for certain ancestors, you know, porcelain dolls. I have ones for my grandmother, my grandfather, great aunt, my father. And as it grows, it gets larger. And for me, I think I'm a very visual person. So for me, having a visual representation also, you know, helps me get a deeper connection, you know, when I'm working with ancestors. Oh, absolutely. Of course. You know, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, even on the physical side, there are things that we, you know, that, that we may need, you know, to help ourselves along with that. And <clears throat> there are also things that, that, that ancestors may want, you know, uh, to, to present because of their own work or, or something that, that they're wanting to, you know, to do or achieve, you know, at the time. So, you know, that's, that's, that's actually that's quite normal <laughs> you know with that and and it actually holds within it a lot of power you know and i agree with that too because you know there are certain things that i do with my dolls um i won't go into detail but i'm sure that you understand when we say you know loading um <clears throat> i do load my my dolls specifically which with each ancestor with certain things that represent that that spirit, that energy to tie them closer to me, you know, so that right. my work is stronger. Right. Um, and of course, you know, we won't go into what goes into that because, you know, every tradition is a little bit different on that, but we understand what doing, you know, loading would be, you know, and that's those certain items, which we won't tell, which we won't tell because, you know, we keep that secretive to ourselves. Of course. You know, um, of course. So, aside from ancestor um, reverence and working with your ancestors, I mean, what other tips do you have for new readers or people that want to be better diviners? You know, I mean, I know the ancestors. For me, the ancestors is always my first thing that I always mention to people. This is what we want you to, what you should be starting with to get a really good foundation. What can they do on top of that to elevate themselves, you know, spiritually? Realistically, I mean, it, it, it's a matter of just sitting down and, and, and practicing. Like I will tell somebody, like, if you're going to read cards, always, you know, you really, realistically, practice a lot. But the other side of that is if you're going to read cards, you need to always look for, you know, in the card, what is – the bigger side of what this card is saying at the moment. What's going on with, you know, with the, let's, we call it the picture within the picture. If you pull a card, there's something, you know, some small thing in the card that you're doing a reading for stand out. If so, why does it stand out? What does it mean? It's, it's kind of about, you know, not um, how you say, um, not allowing like a monotony to, to come in, in, in the, the way that, that you're beginning to read, but, but to always look at it from a completely like fresh perspective that doesn't have any kind of, uh, how you say, uh, uh, 
tampering on it. Uh, right. And so, like, your you initial know, instinct too. When you know, when you're looking at, you know, if you pull a, a particular card and one thing does stand out, you know, go with it. You know, don't pull back. You know, there's a reason why you're seeing some part of that card stand out for you. And, Absolutely. You know, and and you ju- actually you just touched on a very very important thing, you know, and we we spoke just a tiny bit about it before, but you, you touched on a very important thing which has to do with not allowing uh, fear or inhibition to come in to essentially take over what you're trying to do. Because right. the thing about think- it is, is that you have you have a lot of people who what will happen is is that that inhibition will dictate their reading or that that fear will dictate what they say and what they don't say because so many people are they they are afraid to tell people exactly you know what they see or they want to sugarcoat something in such a way that you know it's you know it's almost like there the, I've noticed that a lot of people like to tell people what they want to hear yeah and I've never been that way and and I and I think that the reason for that, I think that the reason for that is because that they allow either some sort of fear or inhibition to come in to stop them from actually allowing their their intuition and hearing what their spirits have to say come out a, as it should. And and I think part of that also has to do not just with fear but with trust. You know, I, I think a lot of people one don't completely trust their intuition. So that plays a big part on the fear. I also think that there are a lot of people that don't want to be wrong, you know, and let's face it. I mean, it, it, nothing is ever written in stone. You know, if somebody's saying that they are a hundred percent accurate in every reading, run away. They lie. They lie. Things, things change. You know, I could tell you on your way home from work, you know, you can either go your normal same way or you can take a different route. And I suggest not going the same way. You still have the choice of going the same way or taking a different route. You go the same way, you can see exactly what's going to take place. You go a different route, you completely change everything and go around. And I think people right. need to realize and understand that, you know, this is not, you know, a magical everything is written in stone. This is a snapshot of everything that's happening at this exact moment. If we keep moving along in life, the exact way that we're going and we don't deviate, but deviating can create a completely different change. And I think that if people realize that it's not they're wrong, it's things are changing, you know? So, Mm -hmm. I, I tell people I like to practice what I call guessomancy. <laughs> I just happen to be very good at it. <laughs> I just happen to have a good, good degree of accuracy with guessomancy. But I, I say that jokingly, but it's really because, you know, being a medium, you know, spirit's constantly always communicating with me, whether it's with cards, without cards, whether I'm online, whether I'm just talking over the telephone, you know. If you can find a really good diviner, that is honest, open, they tell you exactly what they see, the good, the bad, the ugly, and they have really good reviews. I mean, if their reviews show that, you know, they have been really accurate, they have been spot on, they're compassionate, they're loving, they're understanding, you know, find somebody that, one, is all those things, but two, that you also connect to, you know, being 100%, nobody's ever going to be 100% accurate. You know, no, I have not. met, and, you know, go ahead. And I was just going to say that I was just going to say is that, you know, the other thing that has to be considered is that, yep, you know, we, we, we are channels of divination, absolutely. But at the same point in time, guess what? We are human. Okay. And just by very, the very nature of being human, we are imperfect. So, and I'll be the first to tell you, have I ever been wrong in a reading before? Yep, sure have. But guess yeah. what? It doesn't, it, it doesn't negate the fact that somebody has or does not have that gift or they have that thing that, that can be nurtured into something else. 
but always remember, never forget at the end of the day that you still are human and you are going, you are going to make mistakes. We all do. And we do. I've been off on timelines before for, let's see, 12 years. <laughs> 12 years I kept telling somebody that they were going to get married, they were going to have a child, and uh, they kept saying, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. 12 years later, they got married. They just had a child. Um, and, you know, they still message me to this day. They still sit there. She's like, you know, you might have been wrong on the time frame. She goes, but you were definitely right. And I just never saw it. And it was also the person that they have wanted their entire life. It was like the one love that they always had that they never felt they could get. Mm -hmm. And it Mm -hmm. just took spirit a long time to align everything up to make all, you know, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, make sure everything was in place for all those things to happen. And both people had to be in a certain place in life, you know, for that to take place. Oh, yeah. And, but the, 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 the good thing about that is that, you know, what ends up happening is that the, that becomes an ability to, or I should say an opportunity to learn, you know, and that's where, you know, we, you know, we start asking our spirits to say, hey, can you help us with, with you know, with this or with, with you know, with, with this, you know, issue that, that, you know, I'm having with, like, like you said, like with the timelines or what have you. And it becomes an opportunity to kind of delve deeper into that particular aspect to what? Receive the, the, the divine inspiration that you need to, to bring it to, you know, to that other place. But the thing is, is that this is, you know, as we know, this is a lifelong thing. And it, it is, you know, it, it is a lifelong process of learning and continuing to learn and doing what we're supposed to be doing and continuing to hone and to sharpen those skills, you know? Yeah. And it's one of those things, you know, this is not, you know, we're not get rich people, you know, we're not going to make millions of dollars doing this. You know, we do what we do because we love doing it. It is part of our actual lifestyle. It's not just, you know, this is just a job I do from nine to five, you know, this engulfs a lot of our existence, you know, from learning, from studying, from going to courses and classes, from meeting the people that we study under, you know, whether it's traditions that we have to take part of and practice, you know, and learn the ins and the outs, you know, this is the full time. It takes up a lot of your life. And I'm not saying that in a bad way because I enjoy having that fulfillment in my life you know, and going after the learning, you know, if you can't, you know, continue, or if you are, I'm going to close the door at five o'clock and that's it. it, There's something missing, I think, spiritually, you know, there's a reason why you are not going full force, learning everything you can possibly learn. And, and I love divination, all forms. I mean, bones have been my, my, my favorite thing, you know, once I started finding them and then, you know, I still, I read tea cards, I read soul cards, I read, you know, Lenormand's, so I, I still beat my head in because I can't learn the, uh, the tarot because for some reason they just don't connect well with me, <laughs> but it's an always learning. I mean, I, I constantly always have to look at different things because everything that I learn, everything that I do opens me up more. Right. You right. Know? And, and makes it and so that's, the energy and, and that's is not a good stagnant. thing. You know, I don't like that stagnant energy. Right. And that, and that's another important thing is to never be stagnant. It's to always be, you know, moving down that river. You know what I mean? Moving. You're always moving. You're not sitting in the same place, you know. You always got to keep on keeping on. Oh, well, yeah. And, you know, that river reminds me, you know, when uh, b- before I started getting fully into traditions, you know, I had a dream and I was basically seeing myself standing at the bank of a river and it was a raging river flowing like after a um, spring thaw where all the water, you know, came down off the mountains, flooded into the, uh, the rivers and it was just like a raging madhouse. 
And I hear a whisper of spirit going, well, you know, you got two choices. You can either jump in and go all in, or eventually I'm going to kick you and you're going to end up all in it anyway. I got exactly. kicked. <laughs> I got kicked. <laughs> oh, but you yes, know what? I, wouldn't change, I would not change it for the world because, you know, I didn't see anything at that point afterwards where I was just sitting and just watching. Because for me, it was more of a metaphor of, you know, and I'm wasting a lot of time. You know, there's so much that I could be doing. And yet I'm sitting here just watching life. I'm watching things go by, watching things that I might want to do, but I was not acting. And the minute I got kicked in, that was, you know, it's been a, a, a one hell of a trip. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of like, you know, how you say, uh, what what is that from Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you just keep going further and further and shit. Then you don't even know what you're going to end up with. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's the joy of the fun, you know, is the not Yeah, knowing. exactly. It's always a surprise. <laughs> you know, I want to take a moment to, you know, thank a couple people because we had the uh, Magical Solution who joined us in chat. Uh, Lena Albert, uh, Karen Dalton-Smith of Tea with Karen. Alpuni, which I think is my friend down in Hawaii. Um, who also has joined us. He's been a little quiet, though. Um, as well as making a reminder, you know, for a show currently on Spreaker, which is It's 12 O'Clock Somewhere with our favorite host, Kendalo Kambisa. You know, you can tune in for It's 12 O'Clock, which I believe now has transpired to 12 O'Clock, I think, Central Time, since he is now in Texas. Um, but you can find him on Spreaker.com. You can look up Kendalo Kambisa, or you can look up It's 12 O'Clock Somewhere. Um, to remind everybody again for the Mile High Conjure Gala, which is happening September 29th and 30th, you can go to ConjureGala.com. There will be some phenomenal people in the root work, the Conjure business, you know, Ambrosine Laguerre, Candelo Cambisa, Professor Porterfield, Lilo Moreno, uh, Hoodoo San Jose. Um, I know I'm forgetting some people because I don't have it directly in front of me. Um, but it's going to be a fantastic time for everybody that attends to learn some real hands-on hoodoo, magic, bone reading, you, you name it. It's by real, honest, true, hardworking root workers that are coming together for these particular days in September. You know, um, do you have any other things that are coming down the pipe that we don't know about yet? Oh, Lord, I'm going to be all over the damn place. Uh, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> um, I will – let me see. What's the next thing coming up? Well, the next thing coming up is in uh, July. I'm going uh, back to the mountains for a few days because I need just a little bit of a, a breather. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to do that. But uh, in uh, in August um, – August 10th, 11th, and 12th, I'll be, um, I'm teaching at, uh, at Hexfest, which is held here in New Orleans, uh, which is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday thing with a whole bunch of different uh, presenters. It's a really, really spectacular weekend um, here. Um, I'll be oh, yes, teaching uh, here. Um, and then I'm also doing a, a, a book release and signing party because in August, I will have some copies of the book, but the official release isn't until September 1st. But I'll ah. have, so I'm doing a book release and signing party here in New Orleans. So if y'all want to come on down, come to Hexfest. And, um, and then there's a, um, there's a wonderful uh, private club that, uh, that uh, uh, I'm a member of that uh, the owner has graciously allowed me to do um, the book release party. It's called Potions Lounge um, at uh, 733 Bourbon Street. So I'm going to be doing it over there on uh what is that the 11th Saturday the the 11th uh and then of course September I'm uh going to the uh the Mile High Conjure Gala um and then in October I will be at uh in Sleepy Hollow New York uh, wow. I'll be doing uh, uh there's an event a weekend event going on uh over there it's called I think it's called Festival of Witches 
Uh, yeah, Festival of Witches is the name of it. I'll be teaching over there and doing readings and all that other good shit, um, which is, I believe it's the 20th or the 19th and 20th of October. I believe it's the 19th. It's that, that Friday, excuse me, that Saturday and Sunday. I believe it's the 19th and the 20th of October in Sleepy Hollow. And then from there, I... I may be in Salem, Massachusetts. That hasn't been confirmed yet. I'm just waiting to hear back. Um, uh, and then in November, I believe, uh, we're going to do a, uh, a, a get a uh, party here in New Orleans. So we're nice. going to do a big voodoo ceremony here. Well, you know, you're going to have to uh, keep me posted when you uh, get close to the Sleepy Hollow as you know, I'm in upstate New York, so I'm oh, only yeah. a few hours. You know, I'm o- only up in uh, the Albany area. Um, so oh, okay. I'd like to know when you're coming, just as a reminder, so I don't forget, because, you know, sometimes I have that CRF disease. Um, you know, can't remember right, shit. Right, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, me you know, too. I, you know, I'm just like. Busy schedules, you know, it's, I've got to have a calendar for everything now so that I don't forget or miss anything. <laughs> Oh yes, indeed. So yeah, that's that's what's come up, and I know I probably missed something. I but that's what I can remember at the moment. Well, you know, you can always make posts on Facebook. Let me know, tag me in those. I will share and oh, share yeah, and share sure. a like because that's what I love to do. You know, I love to promote within the community people that uh, you know have events and things that are coming up that they're going to be teaching or anything else because that is part of who I am. Um, you know. Uh, would you like to say our final goodbyes to our wonderful listening audience who has tuned in for our very first show on blog talk radio? Um, and there will be more, you know, news about changes coming to the divination table, um, over the next couple months, because we're going to be opening up, you know, at least once a month for live call-ins for, you know, mini readings. Um, so, you know, this new venue is going to be, going to allow me to do some of the other things that I've wanted to do without jumping through so many hoops on Spreaker. Right, right, right. Well, sure. Um, well, I can tell you that I personally would like to, to thank um, every, you know, every person who uh, uh, tuned in and, and listened and, uh, and, you know, and then my prayer for them is that, that they'll be blessed and that, that they will, they'll know, their spirits and that they'll see their spirits and that their spirits will walk with them and that their spirits will work with them and um, that they will have prosperity and always have open roads in everything that they do and that everything that they set their hands to will be successful and that in all things that blessings will always be abounding in every single aspect of all of their lives. Amen. And I agree with that completely. You know, I want to thank everybody for joining us on this week's episode of the Divination Table with Hoodoo San Jose. And we look forward to seeing you next week on the Divination Table, same time at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a beautiful day and God bless. God bless you all. Discover Belfast, Northern Ireland on a direct flight with Norwegian. Not only is Belfast a capital of culture, but the city also offers Michelin star cuisine, breathtaking scenery, and a rich history. There's never been a better time to discover Northern Ireland. Book direct flights to Belfast from New York's Stewart International Airport and Providence, Boston for as little as $115 one way. Find out more at ireland.com forward slash Belfast. Terms and conditions apply. Subject to availability. Flights available through October 2018. Discover Belfast, Northern Ireland on a direct flight with Norwegian. Not only is Belfast a capital of culture, but the city also offers Michelin star cuisine, breathtaking scenery, and a rich history. There's never been a better time to discover Northern Ireland. Book direct flights to Belfast from New York's Stewart International Airport and Providence, Boston for as little as $115 one way. Find out more at ireland.com forward slash Belfast. Terms and conditions apply. Subject to availability. Flights available through October 2018.